Well, hello again, all my YouTube subscribers, and also a very big hi to anyone who is visiting my channel for the very first time. And I hope I find you all in the very best of health in these troubled times. Now, my next posting is not really a video as such, but more of a picture slideshow of a machine that took the world by storm in the late 1970s and without doubt was an iconic machine for its time. So I hope you'll stay with me for the next few minutes as we take a look at Steve Parkins' 1978 Honda CR250R Red Rocket. Now this lovely example is a bike I spotted at a classic scramble in August of 2018. And although I never really managed to grab any video on the bike on the day I did, managed to get these uh, quite nice pictures. Now at the time the owner Steve Parkins uh, did tell me that the bike had undergone a restoration although it's not been fully put back to its 1978 status as there are a few non-standard parts that have been replaced on the bike. Now when Honda launched this machine in 1978 it was a brand new design from the ground up. It had a brand new frame, a brand new engine and restyled bodywork to complement a front suspension system that had almost 12 inches of travel. Now in 1978 Honda claimed that this bike could put out about 36 horsepower which was a considerable amount for 1978 but many people in the know say that it was actually closer to only 30 brake horsepower. But on the track, these Honda Red Rockets were aptly named, as that's exactly what they were, because the low-end power of these bikes was quite tame, although once the little Honda reached the sweet spot in the mid-range, then grab onto something because you were then going forward in a big hurry. But the heart of the 78 Red Rocket was this 247cc power plant. And some of the motor's design was taken straight from the Honda Works race bikes, but the engine was a purpose-built racer right down to its GP-style left-sided kickstart and its compact dimensions. Now the motor had Honda's Works-style porting and was fed fuel through a six-pedal reed valve block. Now the engine wasn't the fastest to get you off the line, but once it got into its stride, it pulled like a train with a screaming top end. Now by using magnesium on the engine casings, Honda kept the overall weight of this little mill to only 56 pounds. Although with the awesome power generated from such a small lightweight engine, it absolutely complemented this new Honda chassis perfectly. And then of course finishing it off in this uh, fire engine red paint just gave this little Honda that something different to the competition in 1978. But make no mistake, when these bikes were let loose on the track in 78 there wasn't much that could touch them in terms of speed and pretty soon everyone and their dog wanted a Honda Red Rocket. Now also in 1978, these red rockets were reputed to have the longest fork travel in motocross with nearly a full 12 inches of movement, which was actually 3 inches more than any of its competitor machines. Now these were 37mm Showa forks and were considered decent for their time and worked well on most racetracks, although if it came to bumpy tracks with big jumps, they were just far too soft and just bottomed out too easily. Although there were plenty aftermarket parts available where you could change springs and valves, which did improve these Fox performance. But in standard trim and straight from the dealerships, there was no means of adjusting the Fox externally, which was a bit of a letdown for most riders. Now the stock Showa rear shocks were a different story on this bike and these were pretty awful to be truthful. 
There was no means of adjustment and they didn't have remote gas reservoirs that other manufacturers were using at the time. The riders often complained that these were far too harsh and had too much compression, uh, not to mention that they had been very poorly valved straight from the factory. But in our particular case, Steve has fitted a very nice pair of YSS classic shocks to his machine, which are a lot better and of much better quality. Now a steel swing arm for 1978, which was said by riders of the day to be just too wimpy and flexed far too much. Although it would be a few more years down the line before we would see alloy swing arms and frames on these motocross machines. But if the track conditions allowed and the rider never pushed this uh, little red rooster too hard, you could still keep that back end in check. Now I have to say the exhaust expansion chamber on this featured bike looks for all the world like it's an original item. Or uh, maybe, I don't know, you, maybe you can still buy new old stock pipes for these uh, machines, I'm not exactly sure. But this pipe uh, certainly looks apart and looks like it's uh, an original pipe from 1978. Although this rear tailpipe is certainly not original for that year, but I have to say it doesn't look a bit out of place on this uh, recently restored machine. Now Honda of course were very quick to stick their disclaimer notices on their bike's fuel tanks in 1978 to make sure that everyone knew exactly for which purpose this bike should be used. Now the uh, writing says sold as is without warranty and the entire risk as to quality and performance is with the buyer. Which uh, basically means if anything goes wrong with your bike then don't call us. That's one of the downsides of buying an off-road machine. Now the little red rocket seat was again decent for its time and although maybe not the most comfortable it was still a good place to rest your butt between jumps. Although you have to remember comfort was secondary because uh, at the end of the day this was still essentially an off-road uh, motocross racing machine. But nevertheless this uh, seat was certainly more comfortable than many of the other seats of its day. Now the airbox on these CR250s was another annoying problem for Red Rocket owners as the filter was crammed into a small airbox that was held in place by an assortment of tiny nuts and clamps. Now these just love to get lost if you were doing trackside maintenance in long grass and if you did manage to find all the fasteners again it was another major job just putting it all back together. But keeping the filter in good condition was top of the list on these bikes because the consequences of a filter that had holes or damage would allow grit and dust into that uh, precious chrome barrel and ruin it in a matter of seconds. Now for a 1978 two-stroke machine, the Honda front and rear brakes worked very well when they were operating in dry conditions. But when you got these uh, wet, you had to think ahead before performing any kind of emergency stop. Now, I'm not saying that these brakes were bad, but uh, these were the technology of the day. And hydraulic disc brakes were a few more years down the line. Now if you watched a few of my videos previously you'll know that uh, those skinny foot pegs that manufacturers fit to their machines are a bit of a bugbear with me. But thankfully our featured uh, bike of Steve's has a nice pair of these heavy duty wide pegs that offer the rider much more support for his feet. Now as you would expect from a bike that's heading now towards 42 years old, many of the bike's controls are not 
the originals and have been changed for these replacement parts. But in many cases these new parts can be better than the originals because they are manufactured from more modern materials and can often be made to function and even look better than the factory fitted items. But one of the other little niggles about this 250 Honda motor from 1978 was that it had a chromed bore in the cylinder which was said to dissipate heat better than a traditional iron liner. Now although the downside was that the cylinder wasn't boreable on this bike so if you damaged the barrel by whatever means it was an expensive item to buy a brand new cylinder. Now just in case I get bombarded once again with arguments about the bike's year of manufacture I hope this uh, little clip helps you all out with that particular fact. But when Honda launched this little beauty in 1978 it was an absolute revelation in motocross and the world had barely seen anything like it previously. Now it was only a 250 but it had a decent chassis, an unbelievably good stonking little motor decked out of course in that uh, bright red colour. Now although this bike was a motocrosser built for the mass market it still had a lot of technology especially in the engine department that came straight from Honda's works bikes. And so there you have it, another iconic motocross machine from the late 1970s, that's Honda's 1978 CR250R Red Rocket. Now there are still many classics waiting in the classic dirt bike TV pipeline waiting to be posted so hope you'll continue to subscribe to my channel to see more of this vintage iron. So until we speak again please stay safe and well and hopefully it won't be too long before we are back doing what we love, racing classic dirt bikes. This video was brought to you in association with Worldsport, the world's number one supplier for all your off-road and leisure sportswear. Just visit their online website for more information.